Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Samantha Zaroff and I'm the Antibody Services Marketing Specialist here at Genscript. It is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Li Chen, Senior Scientist within Genscript's Antibody Services Department to present today's webinar, Peptide or Protein? That is the question, Antigen Strategy for Antibody Production. During this webinar, Dr. Chen will give an overview of antigen design strategy, introduce Genscript solutions to assist with antigen design, as well as present some of Genscript's custom polyclonal and monoclonal antibody generation services. Dr. Chen received his PhD from the University of Massachusetts Medical School, specializing in innate immune signaling pathways. After receiving his PhD, Dr. Chen joined Genscript, where he gained extensive experience in antibody drug discovery and reagent antibody generation. Currently, Dr. Chen is a senior scientist at Genscript, and is in charge of our reagent and therapeutic antibody services platform. To ensure that this webinar has high sound quality, we ask that all attendees please put their microphones on listening only mode. Also, please feel free to type your questions in the question box in the lower right hand corner of your screen throughout the talk. Dr. Chen will address these questions at the conclusion of the presentation. Now, without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Chen to present today's webinar. Peptide or protein, that is the question. Antigen strategy for antibody production. Thank you, Sam, uh, for the introduction and uh, thanks everyone for attending this webinar. So antibody generation through the adaptive immune system is so complicated that there's no absolute best antigen for every case. So we're here to help you decide which one is the most suitable for your desired project. So this is the outline for today's presentation. I will first give a general description of antigen strategy, and then I will talk about the key factors you need to think about before making any decisions about the antigen strategy. I will also introduce GeneScript's technologies that can help you to choose and design optimum antigen for your experiment, as well as our antibody generation service packages. At the end of my talk, I will be more than happy to answer your questions. So please feel free to add them to the charter box throughout the whole presentation. So energy strategy is not confined to the energy itself. Typically, we will consider the following four aspects. Number one, the properties of the antigen. This includes the immunogenicity, post-translational modification, subcellular localization, and the desired epitopes. Number two, what kind of animals will be used to generate the antibodies? Mouse, rat, rabbit, etc. You need to consider which animals is most likely to give the antibodies you want, as well as determining the homology of antigen and how, how to break the immune tolerance, if there is any. Number three, injection protocols. Where should I inject? How many shots do I need to give? How often should I do the boost? And what adjuvant to use? All of these questions need to be answered before deciding on your antigen strategy. And the number four, application or your experiment platform. This is, there is no universal antibody for every experiment. You will need to optimize the antigen based on your desired application. So, with these four aspects in mind, I will further address several key factors during the decision-making progress process. First, I would like to introduce two technical terms, immunogenicity versus antigenicity. It sounds like the same thing, but believe me, believe me, they're totally different. Immunogenicity is described as the ability to introduce immune responses. In this scenario, the antigen leads to the activation of the T cell and the B cell, which in turn produce antigen-specific antibodies. On the other hand, the antigenicity is the ability to be recognized by the antibodies triggered from an activate immune response, which means this kind of antigen will only be recognized by pre-existing antibodies instead of generating new ones. These two terms, immunogenicity and antigenicity, 
helps distinguish between the definition of complete antigen and heptans. A complete antigen demonstrates both immunogenicity and antigenicity. A typical example would be a, a folase protein. On the other hand, a hepton only comes with antigenicities. Some examples of heptans including chemical compounds and small peptides. However, heptans can be converted to complete antigen by conjugation with larger size carriers. This is a common technique to raise antibodies against hepton. In fact, GeneScript will normally conjugate heptans with KLH or BSA before injecting into animals to obtain better immune responses. To evaluate the immunogenicity of the antigen, we will focus on the following three aspects, foreignness, size, and the complexity. Animals usually don't initiate immune response against molecules that originated or similar to itself. This is called immune tolerance. Molecules from distant species are less likely to share common sequences or structures with the host animals, making them a more potent antigens. Secondly, the size of antigen makes a big difference in determining immunogenicity. Based on that extensive sampling, 10 kilodalton is a general cutoff. Anything smaller than that comes with a significantly lower chance of mounting an immune response. In addition to homology and size, complexity in both linear dimension and the conformational dimension is also a very crucial factors, especially for small peptide and chemical compounds. For example, lipopolysaccharide is considered as a low immunogenicity due to the long and repetitive fatty acid chains. Peptide linkers such as GS linker also comes with extremely low immunogenicity. And that is one of the reasons it is extensively used in protein and antibody engineering. On the other hand, uh, on, uh, other than the antigen, host animals also contribute to a sound antigen strategy. As previously discussed, the first factor to consider when determining your antigen strategy is to choose the appropriate host animal. Choosing the right species of host animals will ensure a low level homology and put you in the direction of the successful immunization. Once the host animal is decided upon, it is important to identify the appropriate strain, as different strains may respond differently to the same antigen. Lastly, the, in terms of handling, female animals are less territorial and less aggressive, making them easier to handle better for being housed in groups and therefore make the immunization process much easier. So we have covered antigen specifications and host animals. Now let's move on to the actual immunizations. People have been injecting animals for decades using various protocols, including multiple combinations of roots, dosage, frequencies, and adjuvants. However, most of the time, there is no best immunization strategy. It is better to include several options in one campaign in order to achieve the best success rate. For instance, we would recommend setting up two adjuvant groups, one using the conventional CFA-IFA combo for, the, uh, for emulsified antigen, and the other groups using uh, water-based uh, adjuvant, such as aluminum-based adjuvant. In addition, alternating injection sites will not only help the animals to uptake the antigen, but also to alleviate any post-injection symptoms such as lumps. In terms of the frequency, the conventional immunization schedules is usually three, four shots altogether with two weeks in between. GeneScript Express protocols only takes about two weeks, greatly reducing the timeline, however, uh, there are concerns that this express strategy generated low affinity antibodies since the natural antibody maturation process takes longer than two weeks. So far, we have covered antigen specifications, host animals, and immunization strategies. But we haven't gone about 
what specifically dictates the energy of choice. So it all comes down to the desired epitopes. This is an illustration of a conformational, linear, and a neoantigenic epitopes. Conformational epitopes on the left only exist within a properly folded proteins, and uh, it will be easily disrupted by denaturations. On the other hand, linear epitope in the middle, unfolded proteins will be most likely be well preserved even after denaturations. In addition, for cases like neoantigenic epitopes created by proteolytic cleavage or other post-translational modifications such as phosphorylation, a peptide antigen is the recommended option. Since we want to raise antibodies against a specific region and uh, Immunization with a larger fragment of folate protein will inevitably dilute the pool of antibody epitope specific antibodies. And most of the time, it will be uh, outcompeted by dominant epitopes. The energy strategy not only depends on the desired epitopes, but also heavily relies on the final application of the generated antibodies. This is a simplified diagram to link the antibody targets and the, the application with its specific energy of the choice. For detection of endogenous proteins, both peptide and the proteins may be okay with ELISA and the Western blot. However, when it comes to immunoprecipitation, FACTS, or IHC, a protein, a recombinant protein is highly recommended. For the detection of uh, uh, post-translation modification, a specific modification size limits the choice of energy. Therefore, peptide is the recommended option as uh, previously discussed. Generating therapeutic antibodies is a bit more complicated. Uh, therefore, energy strategy is evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. With one golden rule, choose the antigens with maximum similarity as its natural form. Typically, for a secreted or cytosolic target, a full-length recombinant protein is preferred as an antigen. It is much superior to peptide given the more accurate conformation and the diversity of the potential epitopes. In the case of transmembrane target, a protein of the extra extracellular domain would be an ideal antigen, However, larger ECDs are not always available. In this case, we're going to have to settle for a peptide energy corresponding to the extracellular loops, which sometimes may even be added to a side chain as a cyclic peptide to help the energy present more in its natural conformation. Lastly, what if you know your desired epitope and want to raise antibodies only against to that region? In this case, you could use peptide from the specific corresponding regions and as antigen. Likewise, a cyclic form may help to reduce the conflict between a linear epitope presented by peptide and the actual local conformation within the full length protein. Apart from all that technical detail, what can GenScript offer to optimize the antigen strategies. So first, I would like to introduce our optimal antigen design tools. It provides analysis of a full length antigen in terms of a variety of aspects. Antigenicity index is a little bit small here, but so antigenicity index indicate the, the possibility of the raising decent immune response. Hydrophilicity plot reveals the localization of corresponding amino acid in terms of inner core versus outer region or cytosolic versus transmembrane regions. Disorder plot shows the similarity between the linear peptide versus its natural conformation in folded protein. A solvent accessibility is similar to hydrophilicity. In addition, our antigen design tool can also predict the possible local structure, including coil, sheet, and helix. It also provides a list of candidate peptides ranked by those indexes described uh, above. 
Once we decide which peptide will be used as an, as an antigen, our state-of-the-art flexible peptide synthesis platform can maximally accommodate your special requests. The liquid solid phase allows incorporation of multiple disulfide bonds to form cyclic peptides. Then, if requested, GeneScript's microwave technology can in introduce multiple phosphorylation sites within the same peptide. In addition, our ligation technology allows us to synthesize peptides of up to 200 amino acids in length. Like I mentioned before, antigen homology to host animals is the first key factor for successful immunization. But what if the sequence homology for your desired antigen is too high and if there is no alternatives to go around? GeneScript's Immune Plus technology is able to break the, break the immune tolerance and enhance antigenicity. How it works is our trading secrets, but the case study shown below showed that with the help of Immune Plus, mice can generate exceptional titers of antibodies against an antigen with 96% sequence identity between target and the host animals. Now I would like to take a few moments to review GeneScript customer antibody generation services, which includes both peptide and the protein antigen. I would also like to mention that if you are still unsure which antigen you would like to use for your specific project, GeneScript's PhD level technical account managers are available 24 seven to assist you in making this decision. Please take some time to write your questions in the chat box while you review GeoScript services, and we will get to them at the end of the presentation. So GeoScript offers two types of polyclonal antibody generation services. With the standard package, you can choose whether you would like to use our express or conventional immunization protocol. Which, which host species you would like to immunize and if you would like to use a peptide or protein antigen. This package takes between 11 to 17 weeks and includes delivery of your purified polyclonal antibodies. The second one in our, is our fully customized polyclonal antibody package. This service is similar to our standard package, but also includes an anti-serine delivery as well as the purify anybody with multiple types of purification protocols. So among all these varieties, PolyExpress package includes immunization with either a protein or peptide antigen. Our peptide antigen service includes immunization with up to three peptides each generating their own polyclonal antibody against different epitopes. The protein antigen package includes immunization with a recombinant protein and uh, includes a, a delivery of up to two polyclonal antibodies and one milligram of purified antigens. All PolyExpress packages are named so because their turnaround time from antigen preparation to polyclonal antibody delivery takes as little as 40, uh, 45 days. For monoclonal antibody services, if you are not sure what package suits you, here is a diagram that, help, uh, that can help you to decide. If you're dealing with a single antigen and only need one or two working antibodies, Mono Express might be the one to go with. On the other hand, if you have particular requirement for the immunization and the screening, then the semi-customized package is probably a better choice. If this is still not enough, we can take it up to a higher level and provide even more customized strategies with our fully customized service or monorap service. GeneScript's Mono Express service can generate specific antibodies in as little as 45 days. Our Mono Express service comes in five distinct packages. 
Our highest tire mono express package includes protein energy generation as well as supernatant screening in your own lab and a final delivery including up to five hybridoma cell lines. Similar to our poly express package, the mono express packages can also be separated by the amount of peptide sequence used as energy and the amount of immunized animals. All of these packages include up to two hybridoma cell lines per peptide energy, as well as supernatant and unconjugated peptide. GSOS semi-customized monoclonal antibody generation service is slightly more flexible than the Mono Express service. For example, this service can include either protein or peptide antigen along with GeneScript's ImmunoPlus technology, which I spoke about earlier. You can also decide if you would prefer the express immunization protocol or the more traditional, including longer period between boosts and additional test bleed. This package also includes the midway delivery of up to 20 parental supernatants for the in-house tests followed by the delivery of two clients chosen hybridoma cell lines and the purify antibody. GSQuake fully customized monoclonal antibody generation service is tailored to include anything and everything you would want in your monoclonal antibody generation process. You're in charge of deciding key steps in the antibody development process, including immunization schedule, additional screening, in-house analysis, number of clones, independent antibody validation, and anything else you can think of. This service also includes free cell banking for up to six months, as well as additional options such as antibody sequencing and scale-up production, making GeneScript's fully customized monoclonal antibody generation service perfect for any experiment platform. So in addition to the rodent-generated monoclonal antibodies, GeneScript's exclusive monorab service generates the highest quality rabbit monoclonal antibody. Using our proprietary hydrohybridomic technology, in combination with the rabbit incredible immune system, we can generate antibody with higher sensitivity and a better specificity. It's perfect for everything from basic research all the way to anti-idiotype antibody development or in vitro diagnostic antibodies. Check out the GeneScript website to learn more about our capabilities for generating rabbit monoclonal antibodies against different difficult target, including nanobodies, small molecules, and phosphorylated targets. So in the last slide, I would like to go over a quick summary of the presentation. In this webinar, we have discussed the antigen strategy, which is ultimately determined by the epitope and the application. And GeneScript's technology, which can help you better generate your desired antibodies, and finally, we we'll introduce you to GenScript's polyclonal and monoclonal antibody generation services. I would like to thank you for your attention, and uh, I hope you have learned something useful for energy strategy and antibody generation. With that, I will pass the balls to Sam for the next session, and I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Lee Chen. That was a great presentation. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that if you look at our Q&A page and our thank you page, you can see our contact information. If you would like, my individual contact, my email, is the antibody marketing specialist, samanthaziagenscript.com. You can also visit our GenScript website at www.genscript.com, or you can look further into antibody services through the contact information listed below at antibody at genscript.com. Also, I wanted to remind everyone that this is our Q&A session, so if you have any questions, please type them in the bottom right-hand corner of your GoToWebinar screen in the questions box. So with that, I will begin with some of our questions. Our first question is, can GenScript immunize one single animal with several peptides simultaneously? 
That, of course. So uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, for our polyclonal uh, and monoclonal antibody service packages, yeah, clients can choose up to three peptides for the same for the same immunization, so that you can generate multiple uh, uh, cohorts of antibodies against various epitopes. Thank you, Lee. I'll go to my next question. How is immunizing an animal better than screening a display library to obtain an antibody? Except that if you are only looking for polyclonal serum, wouldn't it reduce the workload a bit? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Sure, they would like to know how immunizing an animal is actually better than using a display library to get your antibody. Okay, I see. So uh, uh, both hybridomas and the phage displays are two uh, really good approach to generate antibodies. Actually, we have both services available at GeneScript, and uh, each one of them has their own advantages. Uh, hybridoma approach uh, through the, uh, the immunization with animals uh, can generate antibodies has better affinity and a better developability since it's all produced in vivo, while uh, phage display may have a better, uh, a larger screening pool, but it's all synthetic. So there's some concerns uh, with antibodies raised from the display approach. Thank you, that was a very nice explanation. Um, our next question is, what about using a whole inactive, inactivated virus as an antigen for producing monoclonal antibodies? Uh, you were saying using a whole virus as antigen to immunize the antibody? Yes, of course, inactivated. Okay, so uh, there's still some concerns regarding the animal welfares when it comes to immunizing animals with virus, even if, if, even if it's uh, inactivated. And uh, sometimes it may make the animals really sick. So it's not, re it's not highly recommended, but it's still an option. So, um, uh, uh, and we will evaluate on a case-to-case -to -case basis. Thank you, Lee. Our next question. Um, is, are there any differences between peptide conjugation with KLH or BSA prior to immunization? Well, uh, they're pretty much the same. So both KLH and the BSA serve as a carrier since they have a larger size and uh, they are conjugated to the peptides through amine couplings. So uh, basically, they're pretty much the same. That's great. Um, our next question says, are humanized mice available for immunization at GenScript? Uh, we do have uh, the option of humanized mice from Harbor. Uh, however, uh, it comes with significant amount of additional charge, not from GenScript, it's, it's, it actually comes from Harbor. We are the preferred vendor for we are the preferred vendor for for using the mouse to generate antibodies. However, uh, clients still has to reach agreement with Harbor regarding the the future payment with the antibodies generated from this particular strain of transgenic mouse. Thank you. Um, our next question. Wants to know about monorab monoclonal antibodies. Are they able to recognize differential, oh, peptides differentiating um, between one to two amino acids? So, uh, so uh, let me uh, rephrase. Is the question about uh, whether the monoclonal antibody is able to recognize epitope with one or two amino acid difference? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I think the answer is yes, but uh, when you actually uh, produce the antibodies, it's, it's technically challenging because uh, given the similarities, there is certain risk to, uh, to obtain 
uh, antibodies with this this kind of specific uh, uh, requirement. Um, and I'm going to take our last question now. Of course, if you have any further questions, we will be happy to send them to Dr. Lee individually, and we will send you out emails personally. Um, our last question for this session will be, what is the difference in the affinity and epitope coverage in the express protocol versus the standard protocol for monoclonal and polyclonal? Uh, I'll start with the, the monoclonal because there's actually no uh, established ways to uh, assess the affinity for the polyclonal antibodies. So for the monoclonal antibodies, uh, there are actually concerns regarding the, the antibody affinity raised by uh, express protocols because uh, it only takes about two weeks and the, the natural uh, process of antibody of, uh, maturation takes much longer than that. And we do have cases showing that anybody generated from a conventional schedule has higher affinity uh, than the anybody raised from the express protocols. But in some case, sometimes we we have we, we experience cases that anybody anybody is generated from both strategies share same similar affinities. So for now, there's no definitive answers for that. And uh, just for precautions, if uh, your desired application requires high affinity, just go ahead for the conventional schedule. And if you are not, you're not much relies on affinity and the timeline is really an issue for you, just go for the express protocol. Thank you, Dr. Lee, Ken. Um, I wanna say thank you to everyone that attended this webinar. Um, and also, if you have any more questions, please put them at the bottom of the GoToWebinar box within our question section, and we will be happy to send you individual emails um, addressing those questions. Also, I wanted to let everyone know that this webinar, as well as the recording, will be online on our website within a few days if you wanted to check it out or send it to anyone. Thank you again for everyone attending this webinar, and we hope to see you soon at GenScript.